So we'll spend about the next 10 minutes going over some of the new data and natural language functions in Mathematica 10. So here's a brief outline of the functions and topics that I'll discuss. And uh, entity value has already been mentioned uh, in a few talks before this one. Uh, but just to emphasize the point, Mathematica 10 makes accessible and computable a large amount of Wolfram Alpha data. So for example, here we see an entity value call where we're looking up the wingspan of the Boeing 747 aircraft. And in fact, we can use control equals here to linguistically discover just by typing in Boeing 747 exactly how the Wolfram language represents the Boeing 747 aircraft. And similarly, how should we uh, access the wingspan property? And so by asking for the wingspan of the Boeing 747 via this entity value call, we get the answer that it's a bit more than 195 feet. And notice that Mathematica 10 has returned this as a quantity and not just as a raw number. So indeed, it comes complete with uh, the unit associated with the number. And um, there's lots of different kinds of data now in the Wolfram language. So uh, you can inspect that just by evaluating entity value with no arguments. And you can see that this list goes on for quite a while. And then each of those entity types has several properties. So for example, if we ask for the properties for movie, you can see that again, this list goes on for a bit. Uh, and each of these properties, as you can see from the input form, is formatted in a semantic way uh, via this entity property wrapper. Moreover, these data types have dedicated functions associated with them. So for example, uh, we can grab this release date and stick it in as the second argument to movie data, use control equals to find out what entity corresponds to the movie Forrest Gump, and find out that the release date of Forrest Gump was this date object, uh, July 6, 1994. Semantic interpretation is a completely new function in Mathematica 10, which allows you to use natural language or freeform input to convert language into Wolfram expressions. So for example, if we want to know what is the wingspan of the Boeing 737 this time, um, then we can just throw that into semantic interpretation and boom, out comes the answer. If you are interested not in the answer itself, but in how the Wolfram language represents this, then you can ask semantic interpretation to wrap the answer in hold. And now you can see that it's a nice aircraft data expression. This is how you get the best representation. But sometimes there can be ambiguities in language. For example, there are many spring fields. So if you want to know what all of them are, you just specify an ambiguity function goes to all option. And that's a convenient way to get not just Springfield, Illinois, which would be my best one since I'm sitting here in Champaign, Illinois, but also Springfield and lots of other states. And if you actually want to see what all these Springfields are, then of course you can use the geographics functionality that Bjorn just showed us and plot it, boom, there it is. If you know that you're looking for some specific pattern, then you can use that for the second argument of semantic interpretation. So for example, here we want uh, this 3 slash 4 slash 05 to be a date, not arithmetic. So we explicitly say we want a date, and here it is. Of course, we could ask for all of them. One reason why we might want all of them, and so ambiguity function goes to all, is because you might notice that this interpreted it as month, day, year. That's great for us in North America, not necessarily the right thing to do in Europe. And in fact, if we do ambiguity function goes to all, 
then we get both of them, we get the markup, the first one was month, day, year, the second one was day, month, year, and moreover in Europe these two would be switched. And of course semantic interpretation can be used for much more than uh, data, it can do general math, you can get it to straight out um, answer your question, what is the integral of sine x, or you can use the new inactivate functionality that I don't have time to discuss um, to get a nice symbolic expression that can be used to do formal manipulations on this integral. If you know the class of expression that you're looking for, you can also use interpreter so here we take our 3, 4, 5 example and say interpret that as a date and boom out it comes. If you're interested in not just any date but say dates before January 1st 2000 then you can use restricted and in this case 2005 does not come before 2000 and so we get a nicely marked up failure object that tells us that you should have entered a date that was earlier than January 2000. There are lots of interpreter types, each of them is documented, and so you can see what kind of restricted forms it can handle, what kind of inputs it can handle. Here's the long list of interpreter types, and um, you can see that I'm scrolling past a lot of computed interpreter types, and there are various families of interpreter types. Um, there are the raw interpreter types that uh, try to do the right thing. There are structured interpreter types that are looking for a specific kind of format. You're saying be strict, you know, 3 slash 4 slash 05 for a date, for example. There are semantic interpreter types where you're saying this is natural language but you shouldn't do anything special to try to f interpret it. And then there are the computed interpreter types where you're really using the full power of Wolfram Alpha to actually go and figure out what uh, kind of object, it, what, what kind of interpretation to give. And so you can use these in forms and uh, in general, forms are used um, in the Wolfram Cloud uh, to parse URL parameters for API function and for form function. So for example, here's a form function that's going to take a date, in fact any computed date, it's going to take a computed quantity um, whose units are compatible with days, and it's going to add that offset to the given date. And so just to give a crazy example and show just you know what it means to be a computed quantity and a computed date, you can enter next Christmas into the form and the orbital period of Mercury for the offset and then the form tells you, oh yeah, um, when Mercury is back to the orbital position that it was at on Christmas Day, then it will be exactly this time in March, March 22nd to be precise. And then we can take that form and deploy it to the cloud, and here's a screenshot of what it looks like in the cloud. Finally, semantic import is the way that you can do bulk interpretation of tabular data. Interpreter can also do bulk interpretation, but not of tabular data. For tabular data, you want semantic import. And so here's uh, some fake data, some random data that I made up, some city and some sales information. And semantic import takes it, um, and I've used the semantic import string in this case because I just made up some junk data. And semantic import automatically recognizes that this first column was in fact a column of cities. And it recognizes that these sales are numbers and gives you the data set that Tally will tell you about shortly.